When you hear APFSDS, what probably comes into your mind is a very powerful round, designed to pierce several inches of armor at the steepest impact angles. But that wasn't always the case with dart rounds. And before technology advancements, you had shit like the Type 69, where its sable round is about as effective as a sewing needle, shot from a potato cannon. Much like every other early Chinese main battle tank, the Type 69 is a development of the Type 59, which in itself is a Soviet T-54 in Chinese production. The most distinct visual change from the Type 59 is the barrel extension, which is really the only way you can visually tell the two apart. Before I get to the comically bad saber round, let me get you up to speed on what this vehicle has in terms of features. If you've ever played the T-54 or T-55, you're basically up to speed about the Type 69's armor and mobility, but in case you haven't, here's the gist of it. You have an angled 100mm thick frontal upper plate and lower plate. Both can stop nearly any full caliber armor piercing round like the BR-412D, which you'll fight fairly often. But it can't really protect you from anything stronger than that. APDS and heat will still cut clean through your armor. The turret is just one big cast piece. Frontally, effective thickness ranges from 200 to 500 mm of effective thickness at a moderate angle. Side armor is decently thick. At 80 mm, most autocannons can't get through you apart from basically perfect conditions. But there is quite a quirky bit of armor and that's the floor. It curves up at the sides and it's only 20 mm thick. If someone knows to hit that, even a Gepard's default belt can get through that and kill all your crew. This vehicle's armor is pretty reliable if you know what you're fighting, as it doesn't really have any consistent weak spots. The Type 69's mobility isn't the fastest by any means, but it's still decent enough and shouldn't leave you behind teammates. Your stat card max speed is 50 km an hour, but good luck achieving that. You'll most likely cruise around the high 30s to low 40s range. It can reverse. Slowly. Good thing it even has a reverse gear. You should be thankful for that, you ungrateful fu- It can swing the hull around fairly quickly despite lacking neutral steering. One tip is if you're trying to turn around from a standstill, drive forward a tiny bit to give yourself a little push before turning, as that will significantly improve your turning speed. Your main gun is a 100mm cannon, with slightly longer reload than everyone else and mediocre shells. But before I talk about those, I'll mention the gun handling first. I'm so good at building suspense. The gun is fully stabilized, which is actually pretty nice for an 8 or early MBT. In a down tier, pretty much no one else has one aside from the British. Your vertical drive tops out at about 4.5 degrees per second, which with the recent stabilizer changes, it won't be able to stabilize even mild bumps in the terrain. So it's only useful on flat-ish ground and at lower speeds, which is still better than nothing. Turret reverse speed is 15 degrees a second on an A-screw. It isn't the best, but it's far from bad and it's definitely manageable. Your ready rack is 19 shells. Add one for the shell in the chamber, and that's 20 shells to keep the tank as survivable as possible. They're all stored in a wet rack and actually detonate quite rarely, as the fuel tank soaks up all the damage. I'd only take a couple extra shells on larger maps, where you're less likely to hit and be hit. And now for the start of the show, the comically bad Sabre round, the Type 71 APDSFS. It's the first shell you have access to. It's an early dart round with barely any penetration, with only 219mm flat point blank penetration. In actual combat ranges, it's more like 140mm. Suffice to say, it's basically nothing. The shell nearly has no post penetration damage. You need to aim for ammo racks. It's not uncommon that you might need up to 3 shots to destroy an enemy, which with your 8 second plus reload, that's nearly half a minute just trying to destroy one target. Your second shell option is a heat effect round which is actually functional and is on par with every other hit fest shell at the tier. I'll talk about choosing the shell you should main in a bit. The Type 69 completely lacks any sort of smoke screen or engine smoke system, so try to stick near cover that you can retreat behind quickly. You get night vision, lamp, and a laser rangefinder, which is actually pretty neat for a rank 5 MBT. So how do you play the Type 69? Well, that's kinda the issue with this vehicle. It requires a very specific playstyle that very few of the maps in the game allow you to do. The vehicle is best used in situations where you're most likely to run into a single enemy at a time. So sniping from a bit of a distance, but you can't go too far because your shell quickly loses its already limited effectiveness with range, and preferably you shouldn't run into a target head on. That leaves you with pretty limited places you can play in. In urban maps, this vehicle is basically out of the question. But, what I just said assumes you're using the APDS shell. So, which shell should you actually main? If you're looking for raw killing power, you definitely should use the heat round. Since the Sabre round makes some tanks like the M60A1 or T10M nearly unkillable frontally. But you've probably already noticed that I've mostly used the Sabre round in this video. So why is that? It's simply the comical factor. If this tank had like the same shell as the T55A and it was 8.3, then what's the reason I'd even bother playing it since I've already played the fuck out of the T55? It's plainly more fun and honestly just quite rewarding when you manage to do well with one of the worst Sabre rounds in the game. 
So instead, I've opted to main the Sable round, but constantly pay close attention to the kill feed and minimap. If I see the enemy has something I know I can't deal with using Sable, even remotely near me, I switch to the heat round until they die or I run into them fully prepared. Despite me basically shitting on this vehicle for the last 3 minutes, it really is a very fun tank, and if you're guarding the Chinese 3, it's definitely worth getting even if it's foldered behind the Type 59. Just keep your expectations in line for the APFSDS shell, and I guarantee you'll have a blast using it.